Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. The American Rescue Plan moves forward after the Senate passes the bill. The next steps needed to get COVID relief to Americans and a struggling economy. We need to work hard to try and reinforce healthy living in our patients. International Women's Day shines a light on ladies' impact across the world. Doctors say it also highlights the importance of women's health. The COVID pandemic can't stop Rockford School District from celebrating notable alumni. Festivities support current students' dreams in the fine arts. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. Eric is off tonight. Shots ring out at a house party in Rockford. Police say the bullets hit a nearby house. Saturday morning, officers were called to a residence on Oakwood Avenue for a report of shots fired. Investigators found spent shell casings on the road and holes in a residence. Witnesses told police there was a party on that street the night before when a fight broke out in the front yard. No one was hurt. Police have not said if anyone's been arrested in connection to the shooting. A Rockford man's behind bars after police find a firearm in the back seat of the car he was driving. Scope officers completed a traffic stop near Soper Avenue and Jefferson Street last night. Investigators say the handgun was in plain sight. That's when they placed 18-year-old Amarian Davis under arrest. He's charged with aggravated unlawful use of a weapon and various traffic violations. Davis was taken to the Winnebago County Jail. A cyclist is critically injured after crashing into a car. This happened around 4.30 yesterday near the intersection of 5th Street and 5th Avenue. Investigators say the bicyclist ran a stop sign and hit a vehicle. The 66-year-old man was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. No word on his current condition. An 11-year-old is wounded in a drive-by shooting on Chicago's south side. Police say the boy was in a car when shots were fired from another vehicle. Investigators found the child with gunshot wounds to his arm. A second child was hurt by shattered glass. No arrests have been made. Less than a week ago, another 11-year-old was shot while sitting in a car in the same area. She's still in the hospital and her family says she'll likely be paralyzed if she survives. Late Saturday, the Senate narrowly passed President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. Senators made some changes to the bill, which means it now has to go back to the House for a vote before President Biden can sign it into law. D.C.'s Anna Warnicke is in Washington with more on what the final bill looks like as she keeps you connected to the nation's capital. The bill has one more stop to make back in the House before it heads to the president's desk. And there's a lot of pressure for lawmakers to get this done quickly and to make sure that Americans actually see relief before unemployment benefits expire on March 14th. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says it's all hands on deck to get President Biden's $1.9 trillion relief package across the finish line. They're picking up the phone, checking in with offices, making sure they have their questions answered. The bill narrowly cleared the Senate late Saturday. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the House will vote on the modified version this week. Help is on the way. That promise is kept in this legislation to all Americans. Under the Senate's plan, Americans making up to $75,000 and couples making up to $150,000 per year are eligible to receive a $1,400 per person check. We expect a large number of Americans to receive relief uh, by the end of the month. The bill would also extend unemployment insurance through September 6th at $300 per week and raises the child tax credit for most families to $3,000 per child. It allocates $350 billion for state and local governments, $130 billion to help public schools reopen, and provides relief for restaurants. But Wyoming Republican Senator John Barrasso said on Sunday's Meet the Press that the bill is too big and too expensive. This was not really about coronavirus in terms of the spending. Uh, this was a liberal wish list of liberal spending. Still, with Democrats in majority in the House, Speaker Pelosi says she's confident the bill will pass and the president will sign it this week. And the White House says they plan to start sending out stimulus checks two weeks after President Biden signs the bill into law. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. Back to you. The relief package includes billions of dollars for state and local governments to recover from losses during the pandemic. Illinois is expected to get $13.2 billion. $7.5 billion will go to state government. Chicago will get $1.8 billion. $1.5 billion will be used for testing and public health in the state. 
$275 million will go towards vaccine distribution. Small business owners are running out of time to apply for assistance. The deadline to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program is tomorrow. Small business owners with less than 20 employees can now apply for the loan. Some places did not get federal help during the last round. For more information on how to apply for this loan, visit the story on mystateline.com. A busy Rockford Street will soon accommodate more drivers. Starting next Monday, crews will move a water main near East State and Perryville to East State and Buckley. The southern eastbound lane on State and the eastbound turn lane leading to Perryville will be closed. Business access roads along East State will also be closed. Detours will be posted. Construction is expected to last through next month. It's part of a roadway widening project with the Illinois Department of Transportation. Another phase of water main relocation will follow. That's set to end by June. Businesses will remain open during both projects. Today is International Women's Day. Across the state line, people are recognizing the contributions women make and recognizing the obstacles some face. Local doctors are urging, are using rather this day to highlight the importance of women's health. Women are encouraged to meet with their primary care physician once a year to identify goals and risk factors to their wellness. Doctors say the pandemics resulted in fewer health screenings, such as pap tests and mammograms. Dr. Lauren Ives specializes in family medicine at Swedish American. She says women often put off their own health over their families, and that can have lasting consequences. Just the screening measures for women in general are more to get done. You know, between pap smears and mammograms, um, there's just more to do that can be missed. So um, being a woman is being unique, and the healthcare struggles we have are, being un are, are unique in themselves as well. Dr. Ives also stressed the importance of eating well and exercising to prevent heart disease, which is the leading cause of death in women. A new law aims to tackle inequities in education across Illinois. Governor J.B. Pritzker signed the Education and Workforce Equity Act this afternoon. The plan expands early childhood learning, invests in vocational training, and is intended to make college more affordable. Assessments for all public school students entering kindergarten will now be required. Graduation requirements will now include computer literacy, laboratory science, and foreign languages. The law also looks to hire more minority teachers. We know that students who learn from teachers who look like them have stronger social, emotional, and academic outcomes. In fact, studies show that black students who have just one black teacher during elementary school are more likely to graduate high school and consider college. You can find a full breakdown of the law at mystateline.com. Five RPS 205 alums are recognized for their contributions to fine arts. Friday, the district will host its fifth annual Fine Arts Hall of Fame induction ceremony. This is video from previous Fine Arts Weeks. Inductees include an art educator, three performers, and a playwright. Rather than the typical in-person celebration, this year's event will be virtual. Participants will be honored with a special video. An auction will also take place online. Funds raised will support local students' passion for the arts. All the proceeds go to the Rockford Fine Arts Coalition, um, which is a nonprofit organization which raises money to provide supplemental funding for RPS 205 students in the fine arts. So students can apply for scholarships to go to um, art camps, music camps, anything like that, just that they might need a little bit more funding for. The digital celebration can be viewed Friday. The auction lasts through Sunday night. A link to both will be posted at mystateline.com. Jury selection for the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is delayed as the court ordered the judge to reconsider his decision to dismiss a third-degree murder charge. Chauvin's charged with the death of George Floyd. ABC News' Alex Prussia is in Minneapolis with more. This afternoon, protesters marching outside the Hennepin County Government Center. Inside, the trial of Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer charged with murdering George Floyd, is delayed. Chauvin's defense is appealing to the state Supreme Court over reinstating a third-degree murder charge after an appeals court ruled the judge in this case must reconsider it. The prosecution argued that should delay jury selection. So this court would be making decisions about jurors for a trial about which we don't know what the exact charges are going to be yet. When the judge here ruled the selection should still go forward, they appealed. Reinstating a third-degree murder charge could have a major impact on this case. If the third-degree murder charge is reinstated, 
that provides prosecutors with a murder charge where they still don't necessarily have to prove that he intended to kill George Floyd. This morning, Chauvin seen inside the courtroom in a blue suit and black mask, listening attentively and taking notes. He's facing second degree murder and second degree manslaughter charges, accused of killing Floyd by kneeling on his neck for more than nine minutes, pleading not guilty. The attention of this trial heightening security, razor wire, fencing, and barricades around the courthouse. When jury selection does resume, it's expected to take three weeks. The most severe charge that Chauvin is facing, that second degree murder, comes with a maximum sentence of 40 years. However, experts have pointed out, due to Minnesota sentencing guidelines, a case like this, it's more likely in the range of 10 to 15 years. Alex Brashe, ABC News, Minneapolis. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. We had a nice little taste of spring this afternoon as those temperatures soared through the 50s, even a couple of spots reaching the low 60s, our first 60 degree high here in Rockford this year. A live look with our Mercy Health Sky Track camera out of the Park Hills Golf Course this evening out in Freeport, really kind of dwindling away at that snowpack, even just from this morning. Now, in some spots, there's still been a pretty decent amount of snow on the ground. But I wanted to share this time lapse with you from the Park Hills Golf Course out in Freeport. You had a little bit more snow out there earlier this morning as the sun came up, but watch it just melt away. And we're going to continue to see that melting take place here as we go through these next couple of days. Really getting some help in our overnight time because our temperatures are going to stay above freezing. But not everybody made it to that 60 degree mark. We've still got some snow on the ground, and while the depth of that is not overly thick, it's enough to keep those temperatures down. In fact, our highs across the area, if we look at maybe where we have a little more of that thicker snow, or maybe another inch or two still on the ground in a couple of spots, Freeport, your high 53. We were at 60 here in Rockford, but you go down to the south where there's no snow, and those temperatures made it up near 70, and some numbers still close to that 70 degree mark. You see a little bit cooler, relatively speaking, up to the north, 60s, 70s to the south. But we continue with that southerly wind. It has lightened up just a little bit here for us this evening, so it won't be quite as windy as what it was this afternoon. And that lighter wind actually going to help some fog to develop. 52 are in Freeport, 58 our current temperature in Rockford, 56 now for Rochelle and DeKalb. Our weather watchers across the area this evening checking in with the mid and upper 50s under Underneath a mostly clear sky. Sandy down in the Kirkland Fairdale area says, Hey, you know what? I'm actually starting to see more dirt out in the fields rather than the snow. And yeah, we're going to continue to melt that away. Although today I did notice more standing water or running water in some of the ditches as well as out in the fields. So we're starting to add more and more moisture into the ground, which we have to watch a little bit as we have that chance for rain to move in. No rain for us tonight, but the cloud cover is increasing thanks to a pretty significant storm system beginning to develop here off to the west. That'll feed in a little bit more cloud cover tonight. So tomorrow, not going to be quite as sunny as what we had today, but there is still going to be some filtered sunshine. Temperatures, though, able to make it back into the low 60s for tomorrow afternoon. It is going to come with a gusty wind. We'll clear out a little bit for Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday night, though, our first chance for some rain begins to move in. Once we get after midnight, that will then continue into Wednesday. Little break after noon on Wednesday, but still some drizzle and a couple of lighter showers. Cold front then comes in Wednesday night, and we could see some heavy rain that would take us into Thursday. Rainfall totals across the area around half an inch up to three quarters of an inch. So 39, that's where we head tonight. Tomorrow we're back up to 62, 61 on Wednesday with those showers that'll continue into Thursday. Do have to watch some of the river levels. Those will be going up a little bit, Mimi, later this week. So we'll have to watch some of that. Could be some minor flooding, but then temperatures back into the 40s, more seasonable by the end of the week. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Sports Director Scott Lever. There are rebuilding jobs and there are rebuilding jobs. And a new men's basketball team needs some major attention. And the guy who tried to fix that program is Rashawn Burno. He's been named the head coach of the Huskies. He was introduced today on Zoom during a press conference. Burno comes from Arizona State, where he was an assistant coach under Bobby Hurley Jr. in the last six years. 
He was the lead recruiter there. He had recruiting classes that were ranked in the top 25 in the nation. Before Arizona State, Bruno worked under current Bulls coach Billy Donovan at Florida. That's good. You would hope a lot of Donovan rubbed off. But then previous NIU coach Mark Montgomery worked under Tom Izzo at Michigan State for many years, and Montgomery's tenure turned out very badly. Another thing Bruno has going for him is he played college ball, as you see there, at DePaul. He has Chicago connections, which will help in recruiting. He's also from prestigious St. Anthony's High School in New Jersey, where he played for Bobby Hurley Sr. So Bruno has Hurley Sr. to fall back on as a mentor and for East Coast connections for recruiting. Bruno is said to be a hard worker and very detailed. His resume is impressive, but this will be his first head coaching gig, and his work cut out recruiting kids to NIU, where the Huskies have had 14 losing seasons in 16 years. They haven't sniffed the NCAA tournament since 1996, and they haven't won the MAC since 1982. The Fighting Illini basketball team is locked in as the number two seed for this week's NC uh, Big Ten tournament. Some fans think they should be number one, and after all, they're the hottest team in the conference. They did knock off number one seed Michigan head to head last week. Michigan then stumbled, losing at Michigan State. There's no question the Illini had the most momentum going into the tournament. They might have the most talented team, but you have to look at the entire body of work from the season, not just the last couple weeks. You can't overlook the fact that Michigan was the conference's regular season champion, and you can't ignore that the Illini's six losses overall are twice as many as Michigan has. The seedings are right. Now the Illini just have to focus on the business of winning the tournament, and if that happens, they will be seated ahead of Michigan in the NCAA tournament. That's my take. We'll be right back. Skies will stay mostly clear for us tonight. No rain in the picture. Our first warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Temperature tonight down around 39 degrees. Now, we could see some fog late tonight into very early tomorrow. Cloud cover kind of thickens up during the day. Southwesterly winds gusting close to 25, even 30 miles per hour. We're dry during the afternoon, but a chance for some showers work in late into the evening. Rain will be with us Wednesday and Thursday. Thanks, Candace, and thanks for watching. Have a good evening.